Alright, what's good YouTube? It's your boy Darren the Bowtie Fragrance Guy on the channel where we talk about fragrance, fashion, lifestyle. We get into it over here. So, if any of those things are interesting to you, man, I hope you guys don't mind subscribing to the channel, man. Go ahead and help your boy out. It's bad change. Help your brother out. <laughs> hit subscribe man and make sure you hit the bell icon as well to ensure you get notified when I upload new content on this channel so on today guys I'm gonna be jumping into 10 fragrances in my collection that I feel are a 10 out of 10 that's right a perfect 10 out of 10 that means no nines no nine and a half no eights no seven no sixes just 10 out of 10 fragrances now you might not see some of the fragrances that you may think or you would expect to probably see on a list like this because I've done a list like this before probably about twice so there's some fragrances I've already covered like Baccarat Rouge 540, uh, Creed Aventus, Reflection Man, Jubilation 25, some of my favorites Creation E. I've already talked about those fragrances and at the time I told you guys that you may see this again and uh, these are the type of lists I really love to do because I get in my opinion, to talk about some special fragrances. So that's what we're gonna be getting into today. Before I move through that, guys, if you have not yet, um, I always am gonna talk about my own fragrances because they're so good. Uh, make sure you head over to NovelistParfums.com and pick up uh, my fragrances, man. There's some very good reviews out. I'm gonna be sending some shout outs really too, soon to some good people that have done some reviews on my fragrances, man, because, you know, um, there's some, some really good reviews out there on them. But anyway, I'll make sure I link that as well. So if you have not picked up my fragrances uh, over at Novices, make sure you do so and show your boy some support. Now, with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into it. I have 10 Master Priest fragrances. Again, 10 out of 10s. However you want to describe them, these are some fragrances that come highly recommended from your boy. So let's go ahead and get into it. If you want to see what's on my list of 10, 10 out of 10 masterpiece fragrances, then you know the routine. Keep it locked right here. Fragrance guy. All right, guys, we're back. Thank you so much for keeping it locked in. Let's go ahead and jump into this list of perfect 10 out of 10 fragrances. And the first one up, oh man, I'm gonna get into it. Uh, my talking about this and describing why I love this so much. So I don't want to get ahead of myself. Let me go ahead and show you the bottle. Uh, this fragrance was uh, came out from the House of Creed, and this one is called Royal Oud. Royal Oud. My God, guys, this is an absolute perfect 10 out of 10 fragrance in my humble opinion listen man if you're like me and your you know your faith in fragrances have been wavering a little bit lately because of some of the uh, all the flankers and some of the subpar releases and a lot of the scents that have been coming out that just kind of smell so similar to other stuff this is a breath of fresh air man when i put my nose to this fragrance this morning it just reminded me of what fragrances can really be uh, how they can move you how they can really have this air of creativity and uniqueness and at the same time be amazing you know and that's what this fragrance really is to me man royal oud now this was one of the fragrances when i first started collecting uh this probably wouldn't have been in my top five creeds in a matter as a matter of fact it wasn't but where i am now my gosh this is it's definitely top five. I'm trying to see exactly where I would put it off the top of my head, but I don't want to do that because there's so many that I love from that brand still to this day, but I know it's top five. I'll say that definitively 100%. Agarwood, of course, Oud, you get some of that, but Oud, honestly, the name is Royal Oud, but it's not the most prominent note here. Um, you have a little bit of an earthiness in this fragrance. There's some galbanum here. There's some angelica root. So there's a little greenness here too, undertones of green, uh, herbal kind of qualities to it, very spicy. Uh, pink pepper is in this, uh, of course, very prominent note of cedarwood, which a lot of people say is the most prominent note. But again, this is just a fantastic fragrance. If you are like me and you're, you've been wavering a little bit uh, with just 
you know where you are again a little disappointed with uh, where some of the uh, where the friggin' game has kind of gone. If you want your faith restored, get your nose on this perfect 10 out of 10 fragrance. This has done it for me, man. Just love smelling it. From the House of Creed again, this one's called Royal Oud. All right, this next fragrance for me that's a perfect 10 out of 10 is one I've actually talked about quite a bit here over the last six months for good reason. Uh, what you'll learn, and I'm probably a lot of you have probably discovered this yourself, the more you kind of delve into this hobby, you like what you like. Uh, now, you do have to, I will give you the advice of trying to steer clear of having so many fragrances that smell similar. But at the end of the day, like I said, there are certain notes that I just gravitate towards. And I'll talk about that when I go more into this fragrance. But a perfect 10 out of 10 to me, hands down, easily, is from the house of Initial Parfums. And this is called Bless Baraka. Bless Baraka, one that I've talked about quite a bit on the channel, um, honestly. And for good reason, in my opinion. This is so good. Oh my gosh, this is so good, man. What does it feature? It features uh, the note of amber, cinnamon, and sandalwood. That's mainly what you're gonna get with this fragrance. Now, it does have some similarities to uh, another fragrance on this list, which I'll talk about that when I get to it. Uh, but man, just my kind of fragrance. It has the right amount of, of bite to it, uh, but it's not over the top. So, so, you know, it has a little bit of a seductive sexiness to it. And again, that's cinnamon. That's one of my favorite notes. Uh, that's, you know, and I've, you know, come to accept that. And it's fine because now I understand what I really, really love. And cinnamon is my favorite note, one of my favorite notes, definitely my favorite spice. And um, you get a really nice dose of sexy cinnamon in this fragrance. Definitely, easily a 10 out of 10 in my book. From the House of Initial Parfums, again, this is called Blessed Baraka. All right, this next fragrance is probably um, regarded, if not a perfect 10, very definitely over uh, a 8 or a 9 on most people's list, regardless of what their preference is or what they generally uh, like in fragrances. And I can definitely see why. Definitely regarded by a lot as a masterpiece from the House of Amazing Francis Kirk John. This is called Grand Soir. Grand Soir, man. I love how this juice has turned even more of a dark, ambery hue. Uh, the more time that I've had it in my collection, I've had it now for uh, at least four years or so in the collection. And this is just, to me, what an amber fragrance is all about, or should be about. So it's definitely in my holy grail of amber fragrances. Up there with Tom Ford Amber Absolute. Um, this one... Uh, you got Amber Sultan uh, from Serge Latines. There's a lot of them that's really, really good uh, amber fragrances. But again, one of the top amber fragrances in my entire collection, and I think in the fragrance game at large. Buttery, creamy, rich, ambery fragrance. That's really what this is all about. And um, like I said, for the people out there that love amber, this is one of the best in class. So, again, easily to me a perfect 10 out of 10. You guys need to check this one out if you haven't, especially if you like amber-based fragrances. Like I said, one of the best in the game from the house of Mason Francis Kirk John. This one's called Grand Soir. All right, this next fragrance on the list is one that I've talked about a lot here lately as well, so I won't give much commentary on it, but it definitely deserves to be on a perfect 10 out of 10 list. I did a full review of it. I'll make sure I link it here or either down in the description. From the house of the harmonist. You knew it was coming. Hypnotizing fire. Hypnotizing fire. Again, the allspice here, the pomelo. Uh, I get nutmeg. I get a little bit of cloves. I get cinnamon. And that captured me from the opening of the fragrance. Like I said, it's a little bit more of a, a little bit more of an incense more mature version of By the Fireplace. Love the apopanax in here. That it kind of plays off of the uh, off of the spices really really well because it's almost like it gives that smokiness to it that slight smokiness to uh the spices this one is going to be one of those fragrances that a lot of people say will remind them of christmas or the holidays that's what kind of scent that this is it almost got a vibe like uh you guys just smell like the potpourri uh, back in the day it kind of has a vibe of that a little bit uh but much more of a higher quality and some other things going on in there but man like i said Definitely one that I think is a perfect 10 out of 10 that I highly recommend people put their nose on. 
from the House of the Harmonists. This one is called Hypnotizing Fire. Now this next fragrance on the list is one that I talked about here recently as well. So if you want to see all the details on it, go check out the review. Um, but I just did a review on this one and I, you know, I did this list and it had to be on there from the House of Bodicea the Victorious. This is called Amethyst. Amethyst, another one that has a very prominent note of cinnamon. And this is really about cinnamon, cinnamon and amber. So guys, kind of imagine uh, taking uh, Blessed Baraka, you know, because I just talked about how I love the cinnamon in that fragrance, and the amber uh, that I just talked about from uh, from Grand Soir. Just kind of think about, uh, you kind of get the best of both worlds of those two fragrances in this scent. Again, so again, very prominent note of cinnamon uh, in the opening of this fragrance, and then it starts to dry down uh, with that amber. I don't even have words for this fragrance. Just make sure you check it out, man. Again, this is from the house of Bodicea, the Victorious, and this is called Amethyst. All right, now this next fragrance is another one that I think pretty much universally is highly regarded around uh, the fragrance community. And again, when we start talking about perfect 10 out of 10 fragrances, yep, this one definitely deserves to be on a list like this. And this one is from the house of Jerjoff, and this is called Naxos. Naxos, and of course this fragrance has that whole tobacco thing going on, uh, which of course a lot of folks have compared this to Pure Havon, which is another, uh, again to me, a 10 out of 10 designer fragrance. But I have always said this, that the difference, the major difference between that fragrance and this one is the lavender in this scent. That lavender kind of cleans up that tobacco and some of the other warmer, richer elements of this fragrance and gives it a very clean vibe. And the way that they just kind of intersect and intertwine, uh, just, you know, to me is what really makes this fragrance so unique and masterfully done because of the blend in this fragrance. Uh, this is one of those ones that to me, I won't say surprisingly, but it's not the typical scent DNA to me that produces a lot of compliments and uh, that you would consider to be mass appealing, but in a way it does that. It does that. It's a very highly complimented scent when I wear it. Okay. Just an absolute masterpiece, man. An absolute masterpiece. You got some honey in here as well. You got, I think there's cinnamon in this as well. With, of course, tobacco, lavender. 10 out of 10 fragrance, easily, in my opinion, from the House of Jerjoff. Again, this one is called Nexus. All right, guys. The next fragrance up on the list is a perfect 10 out of 10. And I give this an extra two points <laughs> to give it a 12 out of 12. Uh, because the bottle is so freaking gorgeous. And this one comes from the house of Amouage, and this is called Journeyman. This is called Journeyman from Amouage. I'm just gonna give you guys a second, if you don't have this, to admire this gorgeous bottle that I'm holding in my hand. That may be a good video idea, man. I don't know how you guys, how interested you guys will be in seeing uh, the top 10 bottle presentations in my collection is something that I may do. So spoiler alert, this is probably going to be on there, man. This beautiful ruby red and gold bottle, very opulent, a very regal uh, appearance and presentation on this uh, this bottle, just like most of the fragrances, of course, from Amouage, which is one of the things I love about it. But the fragrance, again, another note. I told you guys, I think I mentioned this last week, that I have six notes that I would consider to be my six primary notes. One of them is the note of tobacco. Tobacco leaf in here. You have some leather in this as well. Now the opening of it, you're gonna get that, um, that is super spicy with the Sichuan pepper, which is very spicy, like red hot spicy. And then you have that sweet spiciness that comes from cardamom, which they play off very well with one another in the opening. Again, like I said, some leather and tobacco leaf when it dries down with tonka bean as well amazing fragrance this is one of those fragrances when I first started really learning what notes I really loved and, and uh, was okay or felt safe based on knowing my own uh, my own likes and dislikes I guess as a, a, a fragrance head this is one of the fragrances when I read the notes I knew that I would love it because it has some of my favorites in here and I was not disappointed I have a backup bottle of this because I love it so much but anyway Perfect 10 out of 10, in my opinion, from the house of Amouage. Again, this is called Journeyman. 
All right, guys. Now, the next fragrance on the list um, uh, comes from the house of Roger Papons, and this one is called Diaghilev. Diaghilev. Definitely, uh, easily, hands down, one of the most expensive fragrances in my collection. And uh, I purchased this one from Neiman Marcus, I think it was. And uh, it was my Christmas gift to myself. Okay, this was my Christmas gift to myself last year. Um, it's just something that I wanted for a while, kind of put some money aside here and there. And, um, you know, Christmas time came around. And then, like I said, this was my gift to myself this year, last year on Christmas. And I was not disappointed. If you love Sheepras, this is definitely the number one Sheepra in my collection. And there's a laundry list of notes in here. It's long an encyclopedia, so I'm going to try to go through the notes. But I will tell you. What really got my attention with this fragrance when I was looking up the notes was the note of peach. A lot of folks that talked about it, talk about, talked about that, how prominent that note is in the opening of that fragrance. And I love that note because peach and plum to me kind of go hand in hand because they're notes that are, of course, would fall as a fruit note or a fruity accord, but they're not really overly sweet. They're more sexy, a little bit more exotic than most of the uh, fruit notes that you find in most fragrances like apple and things of that nature and it is so well done in this fragrance so well blended and well represented and blended in this fragrance again an amazing sheeper so if you're into sheepers i know this is expensive but get a sample if you can guys uh, because i think you'll really enjoy this one again perfect 10 out of 10 easily to me in my collection from the house of roger parfums this is called Diaghilev. All right, guys, I got two more fragrances left here, and this is uh, one of the, well, I mean, I guess some of the Tom Pours they consider to be, uh, to be designer, high-end designer fragrances, but anyway, so one of the main only designer fragrances on this list, this one comes from the house of Issey Miyake, and this one is called Noir Ombre. Noir Ombre, listen, the hype was real on this one. The hype was real on this fragrance. This came out about maybe four years ago, three years ago, something like that. And I remember when it first came out, I think it was an exclusive fragrance and it was not, they did not have a lot of these here in the United States from what I can remember. And I was not able to get my hands on it. And then it was really hard to find this fragrance for a long time. And lo and behold, man, about a month and a half ago, I'm just scrolling on fragrance net sometimes as I, as I always do. And I saw a bottle of this on there and I picked this up for about $63, $65 and it, it's stealing. I, honestly, for what you get in this bottle, that is stealing, man. Definitely one of the best amber designer fragrances in the game. If you can get your hands on a bottle of this, guys, I would tell you from my opinion, the hype was real on this one. Amazing amber fragrance. You got amber in here. You got... Uh, cinnamon, you got some nutmeg, you got some leather uh, in this one as well. So a little bit of tonka, uh, tonka bean when it dries down. Like I said, there was a lot of hype when this fragrance first came out. And um, I don't know, I, I want to get, even get into that, man. I think that just says something about the design of fragrance games sometimes. Uh, but when you can come out with something like this that is this well done and unique, then I think a lot of people are going to pay attention to it. So, Easy, 10 out of 10 designer fragrance for me in my collection. If you guys can find a bottle of it, if you like amber, no question in my mind you'll be impressed with this one. From the house of Issey Miyake, this is called Noir Ombre. All right, guys, and the last fragrance on this list, easy 10 out of 10. Just love at first sniff, all those good things for me with this fragrance. From the house of Tom Ford, this is called Tobacco. Tobacco Oud, I am so happy that it is, uh, we've gotten to the cold, starting to get to the colder uh, weather, uh, more cooler temperatures outside because I'll tell you now, I'm gonna rock the heck out of this fragrance this year. Like I said, when I smelled this, it just took me to a completely different place. I wanna put my nose on Tobacco Oud. Easy 10 out of 10 fragrance for me. You got tobacco, of course, you have Oud. I have this boozy whiskey accord uh, in the opening. Oh my God, I think there's some tonka in here. It's a very ambery dry down on this fragrance as well, which I absolutely love. Uh, vanilla, benzoin, some tonka bean uh, on the dry down as well. 
like I said, one of the best boozy, sexy, bad intention uh, date night fragrances on the planet, man. So if you wear this, you go on a date and you just want to know exactly what time it is and that you're not playing games that day, get yourself a bottle of this stuff, man. Easy 10 out of 10 fragrance. I cannot tell you how much I love this fragrance, but just know I do. Easy 10 out of 10 from the house of Tom Ford. This is called Tobacco Oud. All right, guys, that's it. That's my time, man. I hope you enjoyed this list today as I gave you 10 masterpiece fragrances that are definitely easily a perfect 10 out of 10 in my collection. As always, I sincerely appreciate you guys' time and attention to these videos. You don't have to watch, but you do, and I sincerely appreciate that. And don't forget to make sure you take a few moments to go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. And make sure you are sharing these videos out to some other folks that you think could use this information or may even find it entertaining. Because I'm your guy, Darren, I'm the Voltaire Fragrance Guy. I love to look good, and of course, I love to smell amazing. So until next time, guys, keep looking good, keep smelling even better. I'll catch you on the flip side.